All right, welcome back to Chapter 14, Pharmacology and Medication Administration. Our overview is administering medications, medications the EMT commonly administers, medication names, routes of administration, and medication forms. Essential medication information, key steps in administering medications, reassessment following administration, sources of medication information. All right, our case study. As EMT's Nate Quick approaches the patient, he sees that the patient who is sitting on the ground leaning forward to support himself with his hands is in respiratory distress. The patient, a teenage boy, does not acknowledge his presence and appears pale and sweaty. Hurry, exclaims the woman kneeling next to the boy. He is allergic to bees. He was stung by a wasp. I don't know how to use the epinephrine injector. What is your initial impression of how serious the patient's condition is? How is epinephrine beneficial to a patient with a serious allergic reaction? What would you need to know about epinephrine before administering it? Again, I encourage you to pause this lesson, write these questions down so you can try to answer them as we go along. All right, EMTs administer or assist in the administration of medications. You must be completely familiar with the medications and the proper procedures for giving them. Medications are administered under medical direction. A drug or medication is a chemical that is used to treat or prevent a disease or condition. The study of drugs is called pharmacology. With EMT medication administration, it is common for the medications to be carried on the EMS unit. Medications have specific, uh, specific effects on the body. When administered correctly, the patient's condition may improve significantly. When administered inappropriately, drugs can cause serious side effects. EMTs only administer or assist with drugs listed in their protocols with medical direction approval. All right, medications the EMT commonly administers are either carried on the EMS unit or are prescribed for the patient. Do not let the patient attempt to get their medication because the activity may increase their discomfort and aggravate the medical condition. That means if your patient needs their medication that you're going to help them administer and it's three rooms over in the bathroom in the medicine cabinet, please do not let them walk and go get it. You can go get it for them. Become completely familiar with your local protocol. Oxygen is a medical gas that is indicated when you suspect hypoxia or hypoxemia. The patient complains of dyspnea or is in respiratory distress. The patient has signs of shock or poor perfusion. Or the SpO2 is less than 94%. Precautions with oxygen administration are high concentrations of oxygen have been found to reduce systemic coronary artery blood flow. High concentrations of oxygen have been found to increase tissue damaging Free radical, free radical production. Oxygen administration difference in medical versus trauma patients. Medical conditions should be supplemented to an SpO2 of 94%. Trauma should be suppl supplemented to an SpO2 of 95%. Oral glucose. Brain cells require an un uninterrupted supply of glucose. Oral glucose may be administered to diabetics with low blood glucose levels. Activated charcoal, a fine black powder, may be administered in some cases of ingested poisons to absorb po the poison and prevent its absorption into the body. Aspirin is administered to patients with chest discomfort or pain related to the lack of oxygen supply to the heart. May prevent complete blockage of coronary arteries by interfering with platelet function. Uh, one thing about aspirin is that it is an anticoagulant. That means it has an, is an anti-clotting factor, and it causes the blood platelets to be um, more, I guess, I wouldn't say greasy, but slick, more slippery, and they have uh, less ability to clot. Inhaled bronchodilators, or a meter dose inhaler, is prescribed to patients with chronic respiratory disease, EMTs may only administer medications that are beta-2 agonists designed to dilate bronchioles. Drugs include albuterol and levalbuterol. So, 
chronic respiratory diseases are COPD, um, which could be chronic bronchitis or emphysema, and also asthma is considered a chronic respiratory disease. A small volume nebulizer. Um, this can also be used to administer um, albuterol and levalbuterol. It is prescribed to patients with chronic respiratory disease. EMTs, EMTs may only administer medications that are beta-2 agonists. Beta-2, because we have lung, two lungs, right? Beta-2 um, agonist that is designed to dilate the bronchioles. That means those bronchial tubes that go down to our lungs, they will constrict, making our patient's condition worse. We will hear wheezing, usually, with the stethoscope, and we can give albuterol via the meter dose inhaler or small volume nebulizer. Drugs include albuterol and levalbuterol. Okay, nitroglycerin. Used by cardiac patients, dilates blood vessels to reduce workload of the heart and allow uh, increased blood flow to the heart muscle. Hypotension is a major side effect. Hypotension, hypo meaning, uh, meaning low. Tension uh, meaning heart function. So low heart, I'm sorry, tension meaning pressure, low. Um, so it would mean hypotension would mean low pressure, low blood pressure. Um, it must not be given to patients who have recently taken drugs for erectile dysfunction. Yes, it sounds embarrassing, but you need to ask. Epinephrine, or epi, as we call it, used to treat se uh, severe allergic reactions like anaphylaxis, reverses vasodilation, bronchoconstriction, and increased capillary permeability through actions on the sympathetic nervous system. Patients with severe allergies may carry an epinephrine auto-injector. Naloxone hydrochloride, also known as Narcan, used to treat a known or suspected opioid overdose. Naloxone is a competitive opioid antagonist that competes for the same receptor binding site as the opioid drug. Narcan suddenly reverses respiratory depression, hypotension, and sedative effects created by the opi opioid overdose. All right. Kneeling next to the patient, Nate can hear strider and wheezing, and he detects a weak, rapid radi radio pulse. The patient is unable to speak. With the history of a bee sting allergy and witness bee sting and signs of severe distress associated with anaphylaxis, Nate knows he must act quickly. Follow lo following local protocol, Nate prepares to administer the epinephrine auto-injector. What is the medication form that Nate is about to administer? By what route will Nate administer the medication? What are the steps that Nate must follow in administering the medication? Again, pause, write these questions down so that you can answer them as we go along. Alright, medication names. Drugs have the following categories of names. Chemical name, generic, trade, and official. Example, chemical name, 1,2,3-propanitriol, trinitrate. The generic name is nitroglycerin tablets. Official name, nitroglycerin tablets, USP. Trade name, nitrostat. All right, so here's some common generic and trade uh, medication names. Generic, uh, uh, generic names on the left, trade names in the middle, and what it's used for on the right. Um, you can look at these, um, go over this table, um, just so you can get an idea. Get this in your brain. Here's some more. You may need, mainly need to be looking at this chart for what the generic name is and what it's used for. Okay, routes of administration. The route is how the medication is given or given to or taken by the patient. The route affects how fast the medication is absorbed by the body and its effect. Each medication EMT administers is prepared in a form that allows for the quickest and safest absorption into the body. EMTs commonly, <coughs> excuse me, EMTs commonly give medications by these routes. Sublingually, that is under the tongue, oral, that is in the mouth, 
inhalation, that is breathing it in, intramuscular, that is injecting it into a large muscle group, intranasal, that is shooting it up the nose with a mucosal atomizer device, and subcutaneous, under the skin. Sublingual medication is placed between the patient's tongue where it is dissolved and absorbed. All nitroglycerin tablets are going to be sublingually and sprays. Use only in alert patients. Um, use to administer nitroglycerin tablets and spray. Oral, the drug is swallowed for absorption through the gastrointestinal tract. Activated charcoal is not absorbed. Use only in alert patients. Used to administer aspirin, oral glucose, and activated charcoal. Inhalation. Used for gases and aerosols. Medication is inhaled into the lungs for absorption. Used to administer oxygen to medications given by meter dose inhaler or small volume nebulizer. Intramuscular. Injected into a muscle mass for absorption. Requires use of a needle. Some discomfort to patient. Used to administer epinephrine by auto injector. You can also administer Narcan by auto injector if you have one. But we're going to show you how to do it with uh, through the nose. Intranasal, just like this is intranasal. Uh, the medication is sprayed into one or both nostrils. The MAD or mucosal atomizer device creates a fine spray of drug particles of a specific size that stick to the mucosal lining. The medication cannot be absorbed without an MAD. Subcutaneous, the medication is injected under the skin into the subcutaneous layer. Produce a slower absorption rate than intramuscular injections. Can be used after an IM injection of Narcan to prolong the desired effect. Medication forms, the form usually limits administration to one specific route. Common forms include compressed powder or tablet. Here's aspirin in its pill form. May be administered for chest pain when a heart attack is suspected. If you look at this bottle down at the bottom, it says 36 tablets, 81 milligrams each. You can give up to four of these. And if you do four times 81, that's 324 milligrams. So you can give four chewable aspirin, or you can give, or you can say you can give 324 milligrams. Liquid for injection, a liquid substance with no particulate matter. There's your epinephrine auto injectors, um, just like the ones we practice with in class. You remove that safety cap and you inject it into the skin. The needle will come out of here, okay? Use for severe allergic or anaphylactic reactions. Gels, oral glucose, uh, glutose 15, that is the, uh, the name, the, the trade name. Um, you will carry this on a truck. Um, I will show you how to administer it. Um, this is to raise a patient's blood sugar level if it is low and abnormal. Suspension drugs. Mixtures do not remain mixed. There you go. There's Actidose Aqua. This is uh, activated charcoal. And you will, uh, in your alert patients who have possibly been poisoned, you will um, give it to them orally, and they will swallow it. It's pretty nasty, I'm sure. And um, it will go down into the stomach and hopefully absorb the poison that was in, it was um, ingested. Um, fine powder for inhalation or deli and delivered by meter dose inhaler. There are your meter dose inhalers. Um, the one in the middle, the green one right here, is what you are probably used to seeing. And then you see these big tubes right here, what looks like a uh, BVM mask with your inhaler hooked to the back. Those are called spacers. Um, adults can figure, when we show you how to use this meter dose inhaler, adults can figure out how to do this when you give them the instructions. And they probably already know how to do it as well. So they don't need a spacer. But sometimes you have children that don't understand and can't follow directions well. So you can spray the albuterol and it will mist be a mist in the uh, in the spacer and then you could tell the kid to take a deep breath and then they will breathe in the mist so they they don't have to follow the instructions like breathe in when I count to three that sort of thing and they, they may not do that so you don't want to waste it small volume nebulizer it uses a compressed gas to form an aerosol in a mixing chamber 
the aerosol is inhaled by the patient through a mouthpiece or face mask. And there you go. This is your nebulizer down here in the bottom. Okay, this cup right here and this cup right here. This is the T mouthpiece right here. So the patient, you put the albuterol in, hook the oxygen, makes a mist, and the patient will breathe in here. Or you can just take the reservoir bag off the non rebreather, hook the uh, small volume nebulizer up here, and uh, it'll just act as a uh, as a non rebreather with the nebulizer. Gas forms. Um, oxygen, it is gas, um, it is a medication, so um, treat it as such, and it is highly flammable. Sprays, droplets can be deposited under the tongue. There, your, uh, There's your nitrolingual pump spray right there, the big red bottle with the white cap. And then the uh, little small bottle right here is going to be your nitro tablets. They're really, really small, but both of these medications go underneath the tongue, which is called sublingually okay for each medication you must understand the following information what are the indications meaning why are you giving it to the patient what are the contraindications well if you give it to the patient is it going to harm them or or if the, if the blood pressure is too low i bet i can't give nitroglycerin or if they've been treated for erectile dysfunction i can't give nitroglycerin and that sort of thing um, so those are contraindications what's the dose how much of it can you give and how many times can you give it? What's the administration? Um, how are you going to give it? What actions? What are you going to see when you give it? Uh, and what are the side effects? Okay. Very important information. Indications of the most common uses of the drugs in treating a specific condition. They're geared toward relief of signs, symptoms, or specific conditions. Contraindications are situations in which the drug should not be administered because of the harm it could cause. Dose is the amount of drug that is given to the patient. Administration is the route by which the medication is given to the patient. Actions is the effect of the drug on the body. The therapeutic effect is intended, to po is intended positive response by the body. The mechanism of action is how the drug works to create its effect on the body. Side effects are actions that are not desired and that, can, that occur in addition to the desire to the desired therapeutic effect may be predictable or unpredictable all right click on a term that is used to describe reasons why a medication must not be given to the patient if you chose contraindications you are correct they are the reason why you would not administer a medication to a patient because of the harm that could be done all right key steps in administering medication Follow these steps in administering medications. Obtain an order form, an order from medical direction. Select the proper medication. Verify the patient's prescription, and check the expiration date. Check for discoloration or impurities. Verify the form, route, and dose. Check the five rights of medication administration and document medication administration. Now, I'm going to see if the five rights they list them in the notes here, but I doubt it. Let's see. All right, let's get back. All right, I'm sure we're going to go with the file rights. We'll go talk about it in a little bit, okay? Obtain an order from medical direction. Every medication EMTs administer or assist with requires an order from medical direction. The, or the order may be obtained online or offline, meaning online you actually call and get the order, or offline the order has already been written and you don't have to physically call. Verify an online order by restating it. So if the doctor says yes, you may administer, administer one more dose of nitroglycerin. Then you say, okay, I'll administer one more dose of nitroglycerin. Select the proper medication. Read the label carefully. Many medications have several trade names. Verify the patient's prescription for the patient for patient-assisted administration. When assisting with the patient's medication, verify that the medication to be given is prescribed to them. Check the expiration date. Do not administer expired medications. Please don't. Check for discoloration or impurities. Inspect uh, for discoloration and cloudiness. Do not give discolored or cloudy medications. Verify the form, route, and dose. Use the proper form for the route you selected. And make sure the label matches the order from medical direction. Okay, here are the five rights. 
the right patient, the right medication, the right route, the right dose, and the right time. You need to learn those. Memorize those. Okay, documentation. You need to document which drug you gave, the dose, the route, the time, and changes in, in the patient's condition. You must reassess the patient after medication administration for their mental status. See if it's uh, if, if it was not good, did it improve, or if it was good and it it, it did not improve, it got worse. Um, airway, respirations, pulse, skin, and blood pressure. Check their SpO2, change in complaints, relief of, or relief of signs and symptoms, uh, the side effects, and then change in the patient's condition. All right, so here's some sources for medication information. American Hospital uh, formula, uh, Formulary Service, AMA Drug Evaluation, Physician's Desk Reference, Package Inserts, Poison Control Centers, EMS Pocket Drug Reference Guide, EPOCRATES, which is online, or other medical director approved websites. All right, as Nate's partner assists the patient's ventilation, Nate mentally reviews the protocol for anaphylaxis, which allows him to administer a patient's epinephrine pen such as, uh, in such circumstances. He confirms that the medication belongs to the patient and checks the name, dosage, and expiration date. He administers the drug by intramuscular route and prepares to repeat the primary assessment and perform a secondary assessment. Fortunately, the epinephrine begins to work working quickly, uh, but Nate knows that its effects are short-lived and that they must work quickly to get the patient to the hospital. All right, our summary is medication administration is considerable uh, is a considerable responsibility. EMTs give medications only under medical direction. You must understand the indications, contraindications, dose, administration route, and form, actions, and side effects. Always utilize the five rights of medication administration. Okay, we'll see you next time.